What up YouTube? It is Ben with Bearded Spruce. Today we're gonna make this modern Adirondack chair that you can see right next to me. For this lumber, I got a little creative. Typically I make this out of 100% cedar, uh, especially if I'm selling these, um, but since there's a huge lumber issue currently with lumber prices crazy expensive, these are just gonna be for me and my family and we're actually gonna paint them with exterior paint. So I went with a mix of pine wood and then some treated lumber um, for some of the structural stuff that's gonna be near the ground. And the total cost for the material, the wood, for each one of these chairs is right around 50 bucks, even with the inflated prices right now. So I feel like it's not too bad if you're looking for a nice Adirondack chair. It doesn't necessarily even have the modern look and feel that we wanted. Like this one, you're still looking upwards of 130 plus. For the price, it still makes sense to go buy your own. I will put a list of the materials that you need to purchase for this project down below. It's your choice whether you go a little bit more expensive and go for cedar. I would suggest going for cedar or all treated lumber if you're not going to paint it and you're just gonna seal it. Let's go over some things that we need for this project. Necessary stuff for this project is obviously the lumber and then we need some exterior screws. Uh, these are the uh, deck screws and two inches is what you need for those for most of putting it together. And then you will need some one inch versions as well. We'll go over why you need those in a bit. You'll need some wood filler. This is an optional step. If you like seeing the screw holes uh, and you don't mind those or you're not gonna paint it or you are gonna paint it, whatever your choice, you don't have to fill them, but I would suggest doing it. It looks a little cleaner. You need two clamps, uh, especially if you're doing this project alone just go get some Irwin clamps. I'll link to the, these in the description below with my affiliate links, but these are priceless essentially when doing projects around the house and especially wood projects. A drill of choice, doesn't have to be this one. I actually just got a new one because I killed my last one. This is off of Amazon. I love it so far. I will link to that in the affiliate descriptions as well. And then we'll go over why you need this guy. Doesn't have to be this exact one, but you need some kind of square uh, to do some of the cuts for the legs down below. And last but not least, you need a tape measure and a pencil. Other than that, you need a some kind of saw. I'm gonna use a miter saw today. Uh, but feel free to use the saw that you have at your disposal. You can get away with a circular saw, um, but for today, we're going to jump in to making this project. So let's get started. All right, so first thing we need to do is cut all the pieces for the base of the chair that we were just seeing. This is going to need a piece of two by six. I'm using, like I mentioned before, treated lumber for this step. Uh, this is going to be painted, so I'm not too worried about, you know, the look of it. But basically, the first thing we need to do is cut two 29 and a half inch pieces. So we're going to go to 29 and a half and cut the two pieces. I'll also have a all the cut lengths and descriptions in the link in the description below but I'll kind of walk you through it as well through this video. All right, the other two pieces that we need for the structure is a 21 inch and an 18 inch. So we're gonna cut those really quick. Once we have all of the base pieces cut and ready, we're going to set two of them aside and we're gonna focus on the actual base pieces that will be sitting on the ground. We're gonna have to cut a, a strange angle here. So I have it written down on my phone. Basically we need to measure 28 and 7 16 from one end, that right there. On the bottom of it, uh, away from the camera, 
we're gonna do 22 and 9 sixteenths. And then from the top down, we're going to 2 and 15 sixteenths. And now with our square, I'm gonna turn it over so you can see a little better. We're going to do a perfect connection. So basically, this is gonna be a 90 degree angle that I'm gonna cut just at a kind of strange angle. Now that we have it marked on our piece of wood, we're going to angle of the miter saw to the right angle. And for me, uh, when I'm doing this, Every time it seems like 21 degrees is the perfect angle. So make sure when you're making this cut that you keep your hand really far away from the saw. If you're super worried about it, please do not make this cut. But basically we're going to cut this angle first. Once we cut this triangle out, we're going to lay it flat. Don't, don't change the angle of the saw at all and line up the blade with the other mark that we made on the And now when it's sitting on the ground, it'll sit nice and flat and then this back section, if you can see, will be perpendicular um, to the ground, which is nice. So I'm gonna translate this onto the other leg and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I have all of the base pieces cut. So you can see there's the 21 inch piece here, both of the 29 and a half pieces back here. And I here's the funky angle that I just cut into it. And then an 18 piece goes back here and we'll We'll put that into place in a few minutes. First things we need to do is attach this front piece to both of the fronts of the leg pieces. Grab our drill and some screws. We're just gonna hold the leg piece flush with the edge as we screw in the front screws. So one on top and one on bottom. And connect the other piece, you can see how I hold it flush on this side as I screw it in. Now if, you're, if your wood is super dry, I would suggest pre-drilling these holes so you don't split anything. That I have the front pieces connected. So we're going to measure 21 and a quarter from the front corner on both of them. We're going to attach from both sides with a few more screws and I typically just do two screws on these one on the top and one on the bottom all right so now you have a nice strong base for your chair next cut is going to be the connection from the base to the arms so we're grabbing our treated wood again and this is a two by four right here and this is gonna have an angled cut again. So this is actually right at 20 degrees. I cut the first end, as you can see, at an angle. So we're gonna measure from the very tip of the long angle down to 18 inches. We're gonna cut another 20 degree angle so the angle meets that 18 inches from here to here. So And then we're going to do a second one. This next step after you cut the 18 inch pieces and you can see they're each at a 20 degree angle. So from here to here is 18 inches and then from here to here is 18 inches. These are going to act as the armrests or the base for the armrests. We're going to measure 14 and a quarter from the bottom on this guy and then this is where these clamps come in it's a little easier if you have another set of hands you bring it up to that 14 and a quarter to the very top of the base you mark this one 14 and a quarter and then you use the clamp 
on this side. And as you're clamping these, you want the front of the two by four here and here to be as flush as possible with this two by six that goes across. So it's a nice seamless connection. Once you get those nice and snug, we're just gonna throw four screws in each of the two by four leg risers. So I get three screws in, take off the clamp, and then throw that fourth one in. So I'll do the same thing for the other one and then we'll join back. For the next step, I cut some two by twos with that same 20 degree angle. And these guys connect right here and go straight back and they need to be level. So again, we're gonna grab our clamps, do our best to kind of eyeball level. You could also use a level at this stage, but basically I'm keeping it flush with the top of the two by four kind of leg riser. Screw these guys in. Once you get one in, you'll have to move the clamp and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side you might be able to see from this angle a little bit better um, here's the other kind of armrest going back you want it to be flush with this guy which is why you do a 20 degree angle and then you want it to be level with the top so it's level all the way back all right so now that i have both of these connected to the arm risers we're gonna do one more two by two that's 24 inches long and just a square cut on both sides and we're going to connect it to kind of be flush with that 20 degree angle Next thing we need to cut is this one by six. We need three pieces of this one by six at 32 inches long. So we're gonna cut those. And then since you're, you've are you seen me cut so many times, I'll just join you when I attach them. So I've moved the chair to the ground. I don't know if you can see this. To lift the backrest to the appropriate height, I'm grabbing just a scrap piece of two by four and placing it down at the bottom and then we set the back pieces right on top of that so it's off the ground about two inches or so maybe a little less but the goal here is to get these kind of straight and about the same amount of length on each side so it kind of looks right and then i find that for this step it's a little easier to do it on the ground instead of up on uh, my workbench. So once you have these in place, you'll have, you'll screw these guys in, both down here, as well as throw a few screws in here. To connect all the pieces together. So once you have the outer pieces in place, you kind of place the middle one in there and space it accordingly, kind of visually check to make sure it's pretty much even between the two and then we attach that one. For the last couple pieces that I need to cut, we're going to use a one by four and it's going to span across the seat. It's 21 inches from edge to edge, so I'm going to cut five pieces that are 21 inches. And then I also need a piece that spans the top here. So we're gonna do one, one by four that's 18 inches wide, and then the ones for the seat that are 21 inches wide. Once I get those cut, I'll come back and show you how to install those. So I have all five cut here. They'll have a hard time staying in place, but you wanna space them evenly across the seat so you kind of look visually nice and also when you sit down there aren't huge gaps since this is pretty dry lumber uh, this pine that I'm using I'm going to pre-drill all the holes before I screw them in um, but we'll just kind of fast forward to this
Now that I have all the holes pre-drilled, which is again a completely optional step, I'm going to attach the front piece and the back piece, and then I'm going to evenly space the other three in between them. You want about a finger width uh, in between, so I just kind of put my finger in there, make sure that even with the edges. The piece that we need to attach is this back piece. Again, this is a one by four and it's cut to 18 inches. This is another one that it's great to use a clamp for, but something to note is these two inch screws, a little too long for the one by fours that we're connecting or one bys that we're connecting to. So that's why we got the one inch screws. So we're going to use these to attach the last piece here. So we're going to switch the drill bit out and then get this attached as well. So we're going to put two screws in each of the pieces that we're trying to connect. For the last two pieces that we're going to attach, I cut the one by four into 23 and a half inch pieces. And these are the armrests here. I'm going to pre-drill these as well and then use the two inch screws to attach these. And this will be a nice place for your hands to rest or your arms to rest or, you know, a beer or something. chair together you are pretty much done so you could take this outside or you know on your front porch and just start enjoying it I'm actually going to fill all the holes with this wood putty I'll link to in the description below and then I'll sand the entire thing to make sure there's no rough edges and then we're going to paint this black I'm not going to bore you with the rest of these steps because you have just completed your first Adirondack chair. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on this project. It was a fun one. In totality, it took about an hour and a half total to cut all the material, screw it all together. I think it's a pretty simple project and really doesn't cost that much compared to if you went out and bought a chair that looks similar. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. As always, thank you for joining me. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Other videos that we've done recently is a modern barn door as well as some shiplap uh, made out of plywood. All of these videos are available to watch right now. Check them out. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm also working on a pretty large project, 1972 Airstream. It is a huge project, a huge undertaking. I'm learning a ton and I'd love for you to join in that adventure. Thanks for joining and we will see you next time.